name's Lauren, and today we're going to be reading Wake Up World by Beatrice Hollier and an introduction from Tony Robinson. We'll follow eight kids from different places in the world and see how they live every day. Where in the world are you right now? How do you live each day? What do you eat? Do you engage in physical activity? As we read, compare yourself to the kids in this book. Let's get to it. Wake Up World, A Day in the Life of Children Around the World by Beatrice Hollier. Wake Up World. Our world. We're going to be following eight different people from around the world today that are going to share their stories with us. Firstly, we have Paige. My name is Paige. It was my grandmother's last name before she was married, and it's my mother's middle name. I live in Brighton in the United Kingdom. Then we have Natalie, which means born at Christmas. My middle name, Zoki Quetzal, is the name of the Mexican goddess of spring. I live in Berkeley, California in the United States of America. My name is Aparecida but everyone calls me Shijinya. I live in Ludovico village in Brazil. My name is Anusibuno, which means things of my hand. I live in Zuo village in Ghana. My name is Mohammed Shakil, though everyone calls me Shakil. It means handsome. I live in Hyderabad in India. My name is Alexis. My last name, Abala, is an aboriginal name. I live in Alice Springs in Australia. My name is Ling. We put our family names first, then our first names. So my full name is Han Zuan Ling. I live in Kayan in Vietnam. My name is Sasha. It's short for Alexander, which means winner. I live in the Le Cartsevoy village in Russia. Wake up! The moment we open our eyes to a new day is something we all share, but what we see, feel, and hear around us is different, depending on where we live. Shijinya says, I like to sleep late in my hammock. It's so comfortable that my mother has to shake me awake. In the room where I sleep, we store rice in big sacks. Alexis's house has four bedrooms. Her room has bunk beds, and she sleeps in the top bunk. After her mother wakes her, Alexis makes her bed before climbing down for breakfast. Shaquille and his brother, Shabir, sleep until their mother wakes them. Their bed is a mattress on the floor. An electric fan blows cool air over them. As she wakes up, Anusibuno stretches on the sleeping mat she shares with her mother and four sisters. When it's hot, they move the mat and sleep outside. It's dark and cold outside when I wake up. Our cat, Pushuk, keeps me warm. He's like a fluffy blanket, says Sasha. Natalie wakes herself up with her alarm clock. Once she's awake, she reads or pretends her bed is a zoo, full of her animals. When Ling wakes up, he lifts the mosquito net that covers the bed he shares with his mother, father, and brother. They sleep, eat, and watch television in the same room. Paige cuddles her toy monkey as she gets up. Her bedroom is painted pink, her favorite color. She likes to watch TV while her parents are still asleep. What do you do when you wake up? Who else is awake? When we wake up, we look around and see who else is up and about. We say good morning to the people and animals who share our homes. All over the world, children live with their parents, brothers, and sisters, and sometimes grandparents, aunts, uncles, or cousins. Pets and other animals are part of family life, too. Before Shaquille wakes up, his mother brings water from the tap on the road so that he and his father can wash. Together, they set up a small table and a mirror in the courtyard of their house. Shaquille brushes his teeth while he watches his father shave. 
The pigs and chickens are waiting for their breakfast when Shijinya wakes up. Her mother has lit the stove, brought water from the well, and made coffee for everyone. She calls Shijinya to feed the animals. Her father and big brother have already left for work in the fields. Alexis likes to see all her toys at the end of her bed. She pretends they're waiting for her to wake up. Her mother is busy getting her five brothers and sisters ready for school. Every morning, Sasha is up early, helping dress his younger sister, Yulia, and making breakfast. His stepfather is away working, so Sasha takes pride in being the man of the house, helping his mother and Babushka, Russian for grandmother, in every way he can. My mother wakes up at dawn because she has so much to do before she starts work in the fields. Then my father gets up and goes to work, leaving lots of space in our family bed. My brother is still asleep when I start doing my homework, says Ling. Natalie and her older sister, Ali, like to spend together, spend time together in the bathroom after they wake up, brushing their teeth, chatting, and looking in the mirror. They sometimes forget that their parents and uncle also need to use the bathroom. I get up before everyone else and help myself to a drink because I can't wait to start the day. If mom and dad are still asleep, my sister and I play with my hamster, Hamish. He's nocturnal, so he's been awake most of the night. Anusi Buno wakes up with her parents, four sisters, and 24 other relations. They share a compound, a collection of rooms, and a walled yard. Her father and the other men get up first to let out the animals to graze in the open until nightfall. Starting the day. Between waking up and setting off for school, children around the world eat breakfast, wash, brush their teeth, and get dressed. In hot countries, they wake up with a quick splash of cool water and pull on a pair of shorts. In cold climates, everything takes longer. No one wants to get out of a warm bed and then put on layers of clothes to brave the cold outside. I shower, dress, then help myself to breakfast, cereal, orange juice, and yogurt, which I eat with my sisters. My little brother is still asleep, and my big brother has already left for school on his bicycle. When Alexis goes out, she has to remember to wear her hat to protect herself from the burning sun. Anusi Buno washes in the water she has carried from the well. Afterwards, she rubs shea butter onto her skin to protect it from the wind and sun. She would love to wear brightly colored clothes, but she has only one skirt and t-shirt, which she wears every day for school. For breakfast, she eats pampuka, millet porridge, sometimes with smoked fish and spices. On school days, Paige prepares for herself breakfast for herself and her sister. They have a choice of cereals, then toast with peanut butter. After breakfast, Paige brushes her teeth before deciding what to wear. Sasha boils water for tea while his mother fries potatoes. For a treat, he sometimes has milk and bread and butter for breakfast. Before he goes out into the snow, he puts on extra sweater, padded jacket and trousers, felt boots, mittens, a scarf, and a fur hat. For breakfast, we eat parathas, bread fried in oil. Then we drink tea. I add lots of sugar to mine. We eat in the courtyard just outside the kitchen. Afterward, Emmy, Mommy, helps me get ready for school. I like wearing new clothes, and I look forward to festival days when we get clothes as pre- presents. Shaquille. What do you do when you get up in the morning? What do you have for breakfast? Shijinya washes with soap made from babasu nuts. The water comes from a deep well. It still has some earth in it, but it's cool and soft. After her bucket shower, she has coffee mixed with manawiak flour made from the cassava plant. Breakfast is indoors because it's hot and dusty outside. I often wear my favorite sweater, handed down from Allie. The dogs on it remind me of my grandparents' dog, Farley. Allie lets me borrow her earrings and helps me put them on. Once I'm dressed, I eat breakfast, usually toasted bagels and cereal. 
After he's done his homework, Ling washes rice for his mother to cook with fish and vegetables for breakfast. When he's finished eating, he brushes his teeth while perched on the wall outside his house so that he can see what everyone else is doing. Off to school! When children go to school, they step outside their homes and families to new places among children of their own ages. Depending on where they live, children make the journey in different ways. For some, it's a long walk, with a chance to play along the way. Others ride in a bus, train, or car. How do you get to school? Natalie's uncle walks her to school. When it rains, they go by car. After school starts, the gates are locked to keep the children safe. Alexis says, school's only two minutes away. It takes mom longer to get us all into the car than it does to drive there. Ling walks to school at midday when it's extremely hot. He always remembers his satchel, but sometimes he forgets his hat. Anusi Buno shares a bag of nuts with her friends on their half-hour walk to school. They like to hang around the water pump, chatting, until the grown-ups shout, Hurry up, or you'll be late! I ride to school in my father's auto rickshaw, a taxi with three wheels. I see lots of monkeys on the way, says Shaquille. How about you? Do you see a lot of monkeys on your way to school? Sasha says, I walk to school alone. It's quiet and beautiful. I look at the different colored houses, red, yellow, and green, and I see how beautiful they are. If it's wet, Paige goes to school by car. On the way, she looks out for the chestnut tree in the churchyard, where she collects chestnuts in autumn. Shijinya's house is between the village shop and the open space where the children play football. Her school's just a short walk away, straight down the same dirt road. At school. Everywhere in the world, school is important. While we learn about children in other countries, they're learning about us. A school may have lots of classrooms, books, equipment, and a playground, or lessons may take place under trees. We're learning to work out how much things weigh while other children are reading and drawing. Paige and her friends started school in the nursery class when they were three years old. Shijinya says, I like wearing these clothes because they show that I go to school. Not everyone goes to school, so I feel lucky, especially when I learn how to write a new word. Children in Vietnam have to share the school day because there are not enough schools or teachers. Ling goes to school in the afternoons. When he arrives, he, call, he does exercises called duke with the whole school in the shade of the trees the children have planted. Ling and his friends plant and water new trees to give shade and protect the soil from floods. I like to be the first one in the classroom and surprise the others when they arrive. There are only nine children in my class today because some of them think it's too cold to go out. The temperature outside is minus 44 degrees Fahrenheit. Today we're practicing the alphabet. Have you ever experienced negative 44 degree Fahrenheit weather? Would you want to walk to school? Alexis says, My best friend Jordan and I are using the internet to share news with school children in other parts of Australia. Sometimes we play computer games, too. Anusi Buno calls herself Mary at school, the same name as her teacher. She helps to sweep the classrooms and the yard before lessons start. She shares her class with younger children, so it's quite crowded. Sometimes her friends don't come to school because they have to help their parents at home. At Natalie's school, the children work on their own, sitting in groups at separate tables. The teacher talks to them one by one. Everyone has a special box with his name on it for his own projects, pens, and pencils. Natalie enjoys silent reading and writing stories. Shaquille wears a blue and white school uniform. It's hot and dusty, and some of the children go barefoot. Their teacher wears a traditional sari. 
In art class, she sits cross-legged on the mats with them. Shaquille is printing with a vegetable called okra. He decorates his painting with dried lentils. What does your school day look like? Playtime. Children all over the world use what they find around them to invent games, try out new ideas, or make their own toys and have fun. Some children work hard to help their families. Others have lots of homework, but there's always time for play. Ludovico, the village where Shiginia lives, is hot, dusty, and dry. It has one dirt road lined with houses made of earth. When Shiginia and her friends play football or their favorite skipping game, Elastico, they kick up clouds of red dusk, dust. They cool off by swimming and splashing for hours in the lake. They don't have toys, but an old bicycle wheel makes a good hoop. Anusibuno says, I play with my sisters and other relatives. There are 18 children living in the same compound, so someone's always ready to join in the fun. We mark out squares in the earth to play hopscotch and make toys and people from clay. We leave them to dry in the sun, and then we play with them. I love Hamish, my hamster. I play with him every day. We also have two goldfish. Freddy is mine, and Bug is my sister Bobby's. Paige likes drawing, too. Her kitchen wall is covered with her pictures. Like most children in rural Vietnam, Ling has no toys, but makes up his own games. His favorite game is Vong. Each player uses rubber bands to shoot pebbles at a target. The winner, the person who hits the target, keeps the rubber bands. Shaquille draw track, draws tracks for his marbles in the dry, sandy earth. His friends are wearing long cotton tunics called kurta to keep cool. Sasha says, I make houses in the snow. When I work from dawn to dusk, I can almost finish a house in a day. I smooth the walls inside and out. If the snow is damp and sticky, I make little tables, beds, and chairs. Natalie practices the piano with her mother every day after school. She enjoys playing, but she'd rather read or watch videos eating takeout pizza. She has lots of toys, games, and books of her own. At the moment, she's reading a book called California Girl. The sun is blazing hot in Alice Springs where Alexis lives. After school, she and her friends ride their bicycles to the pool or play basketball. Alexis also likes watching television and listening to music. What do you like to do in your free time at home? Do you play outside or do you prefer indoors? Helping others. Because we share our lives with the people around us, we have to help one another in all sorts of ways. Doing special jobs for our families is an important part of growing up. Whether we set the table, tidy our toys, or look after animals, it can be fun to share the work at home. Anusibuno says, Every day I sweep the rooms and fetch firewood. My sister and I like washing the crock pots and dishes, because when we've done them, they're clean for visitors. They can see how much we help our mother, and we feel proud. Every two days, Sasha and his brother Vanya collect water from the well. They pull the heavy canisters on a sled. Sasha also clears snow from the path, bringing in logs for the fire, and helps with the cooking. He's especially good at making meat dumplings, called pelmeni. Paige's favorite job is cleaning her hamster's cage. I like taking care of Hamish. I give him fresh sawdust and water. The job I like least is carrying my toys and clothes back up to my room from downstairs, as there are so many stairs to climb. Shaquille helps his mother make flatbread, called chapatis, outside the kitchen. He helps his father with building work when their house needs repairs. Shaquille's own job is feeding and milking the goats. When he's older, he would like to do the shopping and carry the heavy bags for his mother. Ling's special job is feeding rice to the chickens twice a day. His family keeps pigs as well, but Ling stays away from them because he doesn't like the noise they make. Natalie says, 
Cooking is the job I like best. I mix things, then lick the spoon. That's lots of fun, but I don't enjoy cleaning up afterwards. Alexis helps sort her dirty clothes into whites and colors. She puts them in a washing machine and then hangs them out to dry in the sun. Shijinya helps her mother break babasu nuts. The oil in the nuts is valuable because the villagers use it to make soap, which they sell. Shijinya can exchange the cracked nuts at the village shop for a new pencil case or notebook. What do you at home, you guys at home do to help around the house? Do you have chores? Do you like them? Now it's time to eat. Every place in the world has its own special food and different ways of cooking and eating. Some people can choose from many types of food. Others eat the same meals nearly every day and hardly ever have sweets or treats. Children everywhere love to eat because food tastes good, and it helps them grow big and strong. Sasha's family eat their main meal, called obed, in the afternoon. They start with soup made from vegetables grown in their garden, and they eat pickled fish, ham, stuffed potatoes, and pastries. They need lots of food to keep them warm in the freezing winter. Sasha's favorite meal is borscht, a soup made from beets. In Vietnam, even small children are expert at using chopsticks. Dinner is called bua thua. The main part of the meal is rice, with small dishes of fish and vegetables. Ling's family grows rice and vegetables in their own fields. Sometimes they buy pork, Ling's favorite dish, from their neighbor. Shijinya's family and neighbors crowd into the living room of her house to watch TV while they have dinner, called janta. They eat rice and beans flavored with spring onion and coriander, which they grow themselves. Meat comes from their own chickens and pigs. Sometimes they eat fish that Shijinya's father and brothers have caught in the lake. Nusi Bono eats porridge made with corn or millet for every meal. She and her sisters sit outdoors sharing bowls and eating with the fingers of one hand. She likes bito, a soup made with leafy vegetables and nuts which they grow themselves. Once a week, Paige has her favorite meal of roasted meat or chicken with roasted potatoes, vegetables, and gravy. On other days, she might eat pasta with tuna fish, fish sticks, or salads. When Paige invites school friends home for tea, they have chocolate cookies as a treat. Shaquille tears chapatis, soft flatbread, into pieces and uses them to scoop up rice and dal, a lentil stew. Most days, his mother cooks vegetables in a spicy curry sauce. Shaquille looks forward to Sundays when they have meat curry, called gosht. Alexis says, I go to my grandmother's house for tea on Friday nights with all my cousins. We eat pasta and barbecue in the garden. My favorite food is takeout hamburgers. We have them for lunch at school on Fridays and once a week for tea at home. Natalie enjoys salads made from the fruit and vegetables that they grow in hot, sunny California. Everyone in the family has a choice of salad dressing and a choice of milk or fruit juice to drink. Once a month, for a treat, they eat takeout pizza, which Natalie's mother orders by telephone. How about you at home? What's your favorite meal to have for dinner? What does your dinner look like? Do you eat with your family? And with that, it is time for bed. At nighttime, we rest our minds and bodies before we wake up to another busy day. As evening comes, we start to feel sleepy and look forward to bed, whether we sleep on a mat, in a hammock, bunk, or a family bed. Sasha says, I pretend I'm a Martian in the silver pajamas mommy made me. She blesses me and kisses me before I fall asleep. Before Paige goes to bed, she reads a story with her mother or father or plays a game. She cuddles up with her toy monkey and then her parents say goodnight. Shaquille goes to sleep either listening to his sister, reading stories, or watching TV. He has a favorite pillow that he doesn't like anyone else to use. 
It's hot at night, so Shijinya often sleeps in just a pair of shorts. Before she goes to sleep, her sister or her mother reads to her, or they look over her schoolwork. After my parents kiss me goodnight, they go to sleep. I go to sleep with my most cuddly bear, Chester Jr. Natalie likes to keep special toys and photos around her bed. Alexis goes to bed late. Some nights I have a shower, then I read comics to myself before mum comes for a hug and kiss. Ling says, I go to bed as it gets dark, when the frogs start croaking. The last thing I do is get the pillow and pull down the mosquito net. We don't need a blanket until the morning when it gets cold. Anusibuno says, After supper, my sisters bring out the sleeping mat. We tell each other stories and sing songs as we lie in the dark. I listen to the sounds of animals and people and drift off to sleep. Do you have a nighttime routine at home? What is it? Is it similar to any of these kids? In my dreams, our dreams take us to places different from our everyday lives. When children dream at night, they tell themselves stories while they sleep. Daydreams are what they wish for when they're awake. Peace in the world, a visit to the moon, a day at the beach, or a new toy. They especially wonder what life will be like when they grow up, and dream what they will do in the future. Paige says, My dream is to be a vet, and have a horse of my own. I want to fly around the world to see different creatures that live in faraway places. The world might be quite different when I grow up, but I'll always love animals. Natalie says, In my dreams, I go into the stories I've been reading and watching on TV. I become part of them, a princess or a character from a film. When I grow up, I want to be like Pocahontas, strong and fast, brave and loyal. Natalie. Shaquille says, I never remember the dreams I have when I'm asleep, but when I'm awake, whatever I'm doing, I dream of a brand new bicycle with shiny mud guards and brakes that work. Sasha says, In my dreams, our house is turned into the kingdom of happiness, where mommy is queen, my sister is a princess, and my brother a prince. I am the head of the kingdom. There is a singing firebird with sparkling feathers that shine at night. Alexis says, I often dream I'm meeting the musicians in my favorite band. They sing for me and talk to me. In real life when I grow up, I will travel the world, listening to music everywhere I go. Shijinya says, One day, I'd like to be a famous singer and dancer. For now, I wish I could have a doll. Sometimes I dream I'm sitting in the shade by a well playing with a doll. Sometimes I dream about the sea. Ling says, I dream of the day when our house is finished. When I grow up, I want to be a builder like my father. People will pay me to build houses for them, and I will use the money to build a home for my family. Anusibuno says, I dream of being a teacher when I grow up, or perhaps a photographer. I'd like to take pictures of ordinary people doing their everyday work, and of children playing. The end. So, what did you learn today? Who in the book that we talked about are you most similar to? Did you hear about any activities that you'd like to try in your own life? Until next time.